Sometimes you read the paper and you watch the news and it seems like there's more bad news in the world than good. But you know what? It's just not true. People with disabilities have a real huge struggle inside their head and inside their heart feeling equal to people without disabilities. When you're talking about bringing somebody fully into society, you're talking about possibly moving somebody from somebody that is being supported by other individuals or by tax dollars to somebody that is a productive member of society, somebody that is working, that's uh, pursuing their education, somebody that's, that's paying into the system rather than taking out of the system. And the majority of, of persons with disabilities, that's what they want. People look at people who are in wheelchairs as a burden on society. People who have disabilities do not want to be a burden at all. We want to be independent and self-sufficient. But we at CFI have learned that we are the shapers of our future, not the victims of it. And we shape it not for ourselves, but for the people we serve. Disabled, immobile, diseased, unfit, unhealthy, unsound, unwell, this entry from Webster's Thesaurus reflects society's current way of labeling disabled. Amy Mullins, double amputee, pro athlete, knows firsthand how these labels devalue a person's worth to the community. It's not just about the words. It's what we believe about people when we name them with these words. It's about the values behind the words and how we construct those values. Our language affects our thinking and how we view the world and how we view other people. How did it come to be that millions of people are defined by their disability? It happened when labels replaced individual stories as a way to define the person. With its fresh ideas and dynamic plan, the Coalition for Independence is rewriting the definition of disabled for thousands of people. Come with us and discover a whole new set of images for the word disability through the personal stories of the individuals you're about to meet. Our first story is about Jeanette, whose life changed very abruptly. And on my way to work, uh, all I can remember uh, of the accident is that I know that I was getting ready to go through a yellow light, and that's really all that I remember. I was hit by a metro bus, the city metro bus hit my vehicle. I was seven months pregnant. I know they had to do an emergency C-section. I realized I couldn't feel my legs, and I remember asking the doctor, uh, saying, uh, if something's wrong, I can't feel my legs. And it was a team of doctors, student doctors, and the main doctor was there and he said, well, you're paralyzed. And they all turned around and they walked out. Today, Jeanette is living independently, thanks in part to CFI's durable medical equipment reuse program that provided her with affordable wheelchairs when she most needed them. But living independently wasn't always the case. When she returned to her second floor apartment after the accident, life was hard. Facing a situation all too common in our society, her building was not adapted for a person with disabilities, which made her a virtual prisoner in her own home. An entire year went by before she was able to move into an accessible home. In addition to the physical and emotional struggles of adapting to her disability, she had to care for her two children, an infant and a two-year-old. One time in particular, uh, I had uh, I was trying to transfer and I fell from my chair. So I had to spend the whole day on the floor, and I had this newborn baby, and I had to and I was worrying how am I going to heat up the bottle? How am I going to do this? My two-year-old had to help me. I had to teach her how to turn the knob on just to heat the bottle up, and I had to spend my whole day on the floor <laughs> taking care of the kids. So it was it, it was really an experience. It took a lot. Making lives easier is what CFI is all about. With an assistive technology center that is the largest in the heartland, they've been able to help thousands of people live independently, just like Jeanette. Refurbished by volunteers and sold for a modest fee, CFI has a wide range of durable medical equipment available to help put and keep people with disabilities on the path to living independently. Available equipment not only includes power wheelchairs for greater mobility, but also items for daily living, such as grab bars and shower chairs. But assistive technology doesn't stop there. For example, this latest device 
helps a child communicate their wishes. She can go into mealtime and say, Let me pick what I want. She wants to pick what she wants. If she likes it, she can say she does. Yum. If she doesn't like it, she can say she doesn't. Yuck. And now even toys are used as assistive devices. After taking the switch and plugging it into a toy, you can make the toy work. CFI's Toy Lending Library provides educational and therapeutic toys adapted for young children with disabilities like Sarah. Go. Finding the right toy to help a child with disabilities is sometimes frustrating for a parent. Sarah's mom, Maureen, explains. It was a lot easier than going to the toy store and trying to figure out what toys would work. The CFI Toy Library has helped to make it uh, a little bit more enjoyable. I'm just gonna make him go. <laughs> With CFI's help, Maureen is confident that Sarah will have a bright future. All we want for Sarah is for her to live a full life, to have every opportunity. And CFI is helping us make that happen now, and we really want them to be around for Sarah whenever she needs them. Finding opportunities wrapped in the adversity is what CFI strives for. In fact, the International Commission on Accreditation of Rehabilitation Facilities, CARF, has recognized CFI for those opportunities they've afforded those with disabilities. CEO Clark Byron made the recent announcement. CFI received its three-year CARF accreditation. CFI is only the third center for independent living in the world to get this accreditation. Also accredited was our assistive technology center, only the 10th in the world. And double amputee Amy Mullins sees great potential in technology. So perhaps technology is revealing more clearly to us now what has always been a truth, that everyone has something rare and powerful to offer our society. CFI has made a substantial investment in assistive technology, making it a central part of the services they offer. Missouri Assistive Technology Council, a CFI partner, is a state organization formed to increase access to assistive technology. I think a lot of times with employers, they maybe don't realize what type of assistive technology is out there that can enable the person with a disability to perform all of the essential functions of the job. For instance, if it was a computer job, maybe a screen reading software for somebody that had low vision. But a lot of times it just starts and ends with the assumption that the person can't do something instead of thinking right from the start, what can this person do and, and how can we help them do it? How can we help them accomplish being able to go to work, being able to go to school, being able to go out and um, go into the community, being able to be a, a taxpayer. So I, I think that is the, the, the biggest false assumption is the idea that um, right from the get-go that somebody can't accomplish something. But Brendan is finding out what he can accomplish with the help of Tiny K, CFI's early intervention program. Hey, <gasps> Brendan. Set. Let's go. go! CFI's Tiny K program believes in a parent coaching, family-friendly therapy model rather than the traditional medical model of hospital-based therapy. My job is really to be a coach to the parents, so I come every other week to um, kind of assess where he is developmentally, and then I coach them in different strategies to help him grow and develop and reach his milestones. Come here, I need a mama hug! Oh. So seeing the child in the home in their natural environment is very, very important to our therapy and the success of it because that's where their children are. They're at home, they're, they're natural there, they're relaxed there, that's part of their environment. So to include parents in that and, have, and coach those parents is the cutting edge of home therapy for under three for infants and toddlers. Stability at home means everything to Brendan's parents. Whether I'm here or deployed, we know there's that one stable thing you know, with our family, that every week somebody's going to come here and help Brendan. These people understand what it is to have a child with special needs and to give you the encouragement, the confidence, and the tools that we need to help Brendan reach his potential. Up, 
came the sun and dried up all the rain and the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again yay oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. because all disabilities aren't obvious early on a pediatrician is key to early intervention it's very important as a pediatrician to look at children and pick up any problems any disabilities um, we look from head to toe if I have any suspicions that there's a problem, um, Tiny K is one of the avenues that I choose to look at the child and um, make sure that my suspicions are true or um, are not correct. Um, Tiny K does work with developmental physicians who also can further explore any problems. And one of the most shocking problems seen by physicians today is the increasing number of autism cases. There are more people affected by autism than diabetes and cancer combined. By the time Adam was a toddler, his parents knew he had autism. Today, Adam's a teenager and becoming more independent by the day, thanks in part to the support that he and his family have received from CFI's Autism In-Home Program. What we're trying to do is teach Adam that he can do some things in his home. By teaching him the switch, we can use that to turn on lights, turn on different things throughout the house so that he can learn that by turning on the switch, he can get what he needs or wants and helps him become more independent. My son with autism, he um, is delightful, he's loving, he has a great smile and a great sense of humor in spite of the challenges. Many people said to put him in an institution, and I said, it's not going to happen. He's, my, he's our child, and he is going to be in his home, and we will find the interventions to, to help him overcome these behaviors. With Adam, we are actually transitioning from teenage years, and we will transition into the adult years, and Cheryl has that vision. The coalition has been there to support my vision of Adam living in his own home with supports within his community with friends and neighbors and having a quality of life that any one of us would want. CFI decided to start autism services. It also opened up the other door of bringing children into the program. And Angelo is one of those children. Born premature, Angelo wasn't expected to walk or talk, but today he's a precocious nine-year-old who loves to entertain friends and family. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Coalition for Independence has been able to assist with advocating for Angelo's needs, but the big part of CFI is they train the parents. They show the parents how to advocate for the child. And there is no better example of advocating for children than when in 1984, activist and TV actor with cerebral palsy, Jerry Jewell, called Sesame Street when she realized that the show was lacking one important element. The producer acknowledged, yes, it was true, there were no children with disabilities on the show. So Jerry responded. I said, well, you gotta change that. I believe that you gotta expose children to people with differences so that when they've grown up, they're not so screwed up. <laughs> CFI continues to rewrite the definition of disabled by helping people with disabilities find the key to their own power. If you can open a door for a person at a crucial moment, you are educating them in the best sense. You're teaching them to open doors for themselves. Mm -hmm.